Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chris Cowan. I'm CEO of Grave Virtual. This week, part of our team spent time in Boston working with the Forge development staff on a couple of projects, and we thought it'd be good to show them off. So first off, we look to optimize the virtual reality planning environment so that we can dynamically build virtual reality scenes on lower and lower end devices. Uh, today, we're currently built on the Vive and the Rift, but we want to be able to go to standalone devices such as the Oculus Go. So in initially loading the scene, we'll load walls and floors so that you get a basic understanding of the geometry of the building so you can navigate it. But as you can see here, half the building is not loaded. This is due to something called occlusion culling. Basically, the user is on the other side of the wall, and anything occluded or blocked by the wall view, we do not load. So from this point of view, you can see the user cannot see past the exterior wall, and therefore there's no need to really render it and take up computational space. Also, we look at the field of view. So here you see the user is well past the building, looking out to the north of the site. Therefore, we don't load anything in the background. Uh, both this occlusion and this field of view loading are fairly typical when it comes to video games and in particular virtual reality. The thing we're doing differently is the fact that we're streaming down these objects directly from the Forge viewer in real time. This allows us to stream down any model uploaded to GRIT to lower tier devices such as the Oculus Go that do not have a dedicated video card. Another common gaming tactic that we use is called dynamic loading. Basically, you see the sphere that is surrounding the user, and as they move around and it comes in contact with these objects, we then render them at that point in time. That allows us to show detail when the user is actually up and close with the object so that they can reach out and put their planning data into the system. This doesn't require us to load every object in the scene all at once, but rather to load the things that matter because of where they're positionally located. Here's a great example of seeing chairs entering the sphere and therefore loading, but also chairs in the background that are disappearing because that sphere, that user has left that area and therefore does not necessarily need to see those. This is a common tactic that's used once again, but uh, it's something that allows us to use lower end devices such as the Oculus Go. So this is an enabling us to uh, download an app onto an Oculus Go, a completely standalone three degree of freedom he headset uh, that don't, doesn't require anything other than an internet connection. Now we're able to pull up the project and uh, as soon as the user enters the space, we begin streaming down the entire uh, building information model so that they can begin interacting with it. Now, we're still working on a few uh, optimization to just get this done quicker and quicker, but you can see that these objects are being loaded and the basic geometry of the building is coming to shape. As the user moves closer to the objects and begins to get that in their sphere, uh, the detail starts to come in. We'll keep playing with what distance does it make sense to load an object, but we understand that when the planner is actually looking at an item, depositing information, they're going to be pretty close. So we don't need to load every object in the scene, just the ones that they're going to need to capture. The other project we worked on this week was an augmented reality task assist. So based on the schedule that we output, being able to select a work package and load it in one-to-one -one context on the actual job site, pulling down the geometry that has been used in the planning and scheduling environments, but actually using it to assist the task. Here we're just pulling down the lean con block tower that we use in a lot of our demos, but we should be able to pull any geometry down that has come through the entire process that begins to build that schedule more like a work packaging software. This allows us to not only understand the activity and context of the job site, but the work packages are actually directly connected to the agile schedule we have. Our team did awesome work this week uh, alongside the Forge developers and I want to commend them on their job well done. We look forward to any feedback you might have and uh, always look out for questions or comments so that we can continue to refine not only the product we're building but the message in which we share our mission. Thank you.